Welcome back folks. I'm Joe and you're watching Safari Joe's Adventures. In this video we're going to be working on the inside of the chicken coop. I'm going to start with the electrical. I'm going to put some boxes and some wire in, two, three outlets, a couple of lights in the ceiling area, and then I'm going to have one motion detector light on the outside. In case we get something like a bear in the yard like we had last night, it will light up and I can see at least what's going on outside. Now as far as electrical goes, this is pretty simple stuff. There will be four outlets, three of them on the inside of the building and a GFCI outlet on the outside. A quick disclaimer, if you don't know electrical, don't do it. It's a good way to burn things down, electrocute yourself, get a professional to do it for you. I have quite a bit of experience in electrical and plumbing, general building knowledge, so it's pretty simple for me. Trust me, you don't want to do this if you don't know what you're doing. When I built this shop here a few years ago, I put a couple of futures on there because I knew I was going to be building either a chicken coop or a barn out on my back corner. I went ahead and put a GFCI on there so I could run extension cords. So right now that's how I'm using power out there to build the chicken coop. I'm going to be taking the GFCI out of this box and putting it on the outside of the chicken coop. Underneath you'll see it taped up. I've got a uh, three quarter inch fitting for conduit. I'm going to trench a line all the way through here and over underneath this left hand corner of the chicken coop. I have the conduit in the ground and the wire through the conduit going from the back of my shop and out to the chicken coop. One of the best ways to backfill a trench is to water settle it. You fill the trench about halfway full of dirt and then just soak the heck out of it with a water hose. You repeat this process a couple of times and then you can run over it with a quad or a truck tire and it'll be compacted. This is a corner I've already drilled the hole through to come in. I've already got all the wires pulled. This is going to be a junction box. This will be my outside security light with motion detector. It's own separate switch so I can leave it on. And then in this box I have myself wires for each one of these lights. I did add three receptacles. One, two, and three. This area right in here is going to be a brooding area. Let me move this. That's why I have two chicken doors in the back. In this area here, at this, let me trip over stuff. Here we go. From this stud right straight across is going to be a chicken wire wall. Everything on the other side of the wire wall will be the main chicken pen. electricity out to the chicken coop. Exterior GFCI clicks off, clicks back on. Everything works. Now that the wiring's done inside the chicken coop, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the interior walls. Now you don't have to 
put interior walls in a chicken coop. In fact, probably 90% or more of all the chicken coops I've ever seen in my lifetime have no interior walls, they're just frame. I'm going to put some OSB inside there, paint it, and that way it's easier to clean when it's time to clean it. I'm also going to put a chicken wire divider wall so the coop is separated from the feed storage area and the rooting area. This is my divider wall inside the chicken coop. It's framed in with two by fours. I will be putting chicken wire over it. I'll be making a door for the middle part right here. What I like to do for my roost area, I use these closet rod holders. I'll put these on either side of the roost and then I'll put my poles in these. That way they're easy to remove when it comes time to cleaning, they're not in your way. Now I know what you all are thinking. Square pegs and round holes. Who is this guy? Two reasons I did this. One, two by two by eights are $3.90 each or $11.70 for the three of them where I live. And closet rods in my area are $4.19 a linear foot or $75.42. Simple math. The second reason is the one inch round dowel closet rods are a bit small in diameter for larger chickens. So this is how you put a square peg in a round hole. And there you have it. The last thing I need to do is cover this OSB subflooring. With the painted walls and the vinyl flooring in here, cleanup will be easier. I can pull it right out into a wheelbarrow outside that door. There won't be anything on the wood floor to cause foul smell and deterioration. It'll all be on this vinyl floor, so it makes for easy cleanup. I've got this piece in, and I'm getting ready to lay this piece. I had to pull both these doors off to put the vinyl floor in because they were in the way. Now you can put this adhesive down with a trowel. Myself, personally, I've seen it on the internet, and I know some people that will actually use a 3 8 snap roller. Put it down with that. It rolls out more evenly. You know, after about 20-30 minutes, it starts to get tacky. We'll just roll that over on there and then start on the other side.
Well, there we have it. I'm finally done building the inside of the chicken coop. This is the entry door. Inside this divider wall right here is the main part of the coop. We got the roost, the clean out door, the chicken door to go into the back part of the pen. This door can lock shut to keep the chickens out of this side. I've got a large box that I can put in here that's got the same size hole in it as the door and I can use that as a brooding area or to raise chicks if I order chicks. And the rest of this area over here will all be for feed storage and any kind of little tools that we might use with the chickens. This is a clean out door. I can just reach right in here, pull everything right out into a wheelbarrow that would set right here. So anyway, we're done with the inside. This is a freebie. Has nothing to do with the chicken coop, but I've got peas growing in my garden. And I want to tell you what, there's nothing quite like eating, mm, nothing like eating fresh peas with the pot. It's the best way to eat them. My wife gets on me about that because uh, she'd actually like to see them at the dinner table, but it's hard for that to make the dinner table taste like candy. Mm. Well, I hope you enjoyed and found something useful in the interior build of this chicken coop. If you found this interesting and helpful, please consider liking and subscribing, sharing with your friends. And if you ring the little bell, you'll be notified of any future videos when I put them out. You know, life is full of twists, turns, ups and downs, and most of it really depends on our own attitude about what's going on. One thing I can tell you that's helped me is I make life an adventure. In everything you do, do it with a grateful heart and an adventurous spirit. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. And God bless.